half article is better than thousands of words. Buhari is doing the best in Nigeria. And you're watching Roots TV Nigeria. The March 9th elections have come and gone. A lot of conversations are still going on about it. The governorship and the state assembly elections as results pour in. Interestingly, um, one of the things that has come up is really, first of all, the welfare of the ad hoc staff who worked for INEC and then the violence. Um, targeted towards a lot of people who worked during the elections. And those are the things we're discussing right here on Dance for Democracy. And to have this conversation, I have two people who worked during the elections, both presidential elections and the just concluded governorship and state assembly elections. I want to start with you. Welcome, Colin Sobasi. You worked as an INEC ad hoc staff. Welcome. Yes, sir. thank you very much. All right. And we have Jenny Chisholm, who worked as a party agent. Welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Let's start with you, Collins. A lot of core members, a lot of ad hoc staff complained bitterly shortly before the March 9th elections that their remunerations weren't paid. So my first question is, what were you promised by INEC? Were those promises fulfilled? And if not, what is left? What were they meant to fulfill? Okay, like from my own perspective and what really uh, interested me to participate as an ad hoc staff is actually that INEC had a press conference where they told us that they are going to pay core members. I don't know about ad hoc staff because even from the training, we were trained as core members and others were trained as other kind of staffs that they are going to use during the election. And uh, what I heard from INEC was actually they are going to pay 32,000 Naira for, for each election. I see. But from the payment, from what we have seen, what INEC paid is... Uh, uh, 1,000 Naira for transport allowance, 3,000 Naira for um, feeding allowance, and uh, 9,000 Naira for the presidential uh, election. That's and a total of, uh, mathematically, that's like 13,000. Exactly. So it, whether they fulfill their promise or not is not a problem, but the delay, because the time we participated for the training was that we received our training allowance like a month after. And not even, as I'm talking to you, not even all have been paid. Sometimes the lag between paying it through CBN to come and collect it manually. Oh, wow. So you see the kind of logistic problem that the core members are subjected so to. So what you were protesting wasn't just the fact that the amount of money you received at the end of the day was different from what you were promised, but even that which was promised was paid to you very late. Exactly. So are you one of those affected? I mean, have you been paid for the presidential election? I, I I've been paid for the presidential election, but my training allowance took one month. In fact, I already I already participated in the presidential election before, before I received my training allowance. Uh, how much was that? My training allowance was 4,500. 4,500 took a whole month to be paid? Exactly. If you had known this was how much you were going to receive and all the things that it would, all the stress you were going to go through to get paid, would you have participated as not, an not adult? Not at all. Not at all. There's no way I'll put my life on the line for such part three a month. Interesting. <laughs> Jenny, you worked as a party agent. Help yeah. us understand, you know, what the remuneration is like for party agents. The reason I ask this is because I had a guest on the show once. She is a first-time politician. Mm -hmm. Politician. This is her first time running for elective office, and she complained bitterly at how much she had to pay party agents. You know, of course, to be right there at polling units. So, give us an idea. How much do party agents generally get paid? Hmm, interesting. Um, Fred, this was my first time because. I was curious, I was excited about the whole process, so I volunteered for a party. Um, for my party, we weren't remunerated per se, but a day before the, the presidential elections, they said they were going to make a, a available allowance, what, what they call feeding allowance, because most of their fundings were from uh, crowdfunding, I and they're a new party, so, I mean, you know, so they don't have that financial muscle. But of course, it's also, they also said it's not part of their ideology as a party to begin to pay people to say, let's build a nation, you know, per se. So I was even shocked. I was like, oh, okay, cool, fine. Because I wasn't expecting from the beginning. I had signed up months and months mm -hmm, before, mm -hmm. you know, right? So that was what happened. But on ground, I met, of course, I was able to network with other party yes, agents, yes. you know, and um, I heard people mention 35,000, 40,000, even though by yesterday, some people had fought 
because of the previous, you know, and all of that so drama. So even, even party <laughs> agents hadn't even received, some party agents hadn't even received yeah, their remunerations the, <laughs> from the presidential elections as well. So it's not just a case of I yeah. not paying even some... There was actually a guy who was, who volunteered for my party, who joined me on my polling, because I, I was alone in the pre presidential election, um, and the polling agent duties. Well, for yesterday, I was, we were two. And I remember the guy's face, because I was like, you were here in the last time, or you weren't in this party. I said, yes, I decided to volunteer for you guys because my party, you know, betrayed me, they are greedy, and, you know, and so they were one of the parties that were mentioning all of those sums, uh, that something thousand, so uh, I'm sure I could guess you when know, the war would have happened. So, so let me say, at, at least there is a remuneration, but, but how but to collect it, it and how the amount is, is so left for them. So this isn't just an isolated mm -hmm. incident. I mean, it's not just INEC that reneged on their promise in terms of uh, timely payment. Let, let's come back to you, Collins. Talk about the facilities. And um, of course, uh, during the presidential elections, the, uh, the one that was postponed at first, that's February 16th, we saw pictures of core mm. members sleeping on the floor, uh, ad hoc staff having to live in very... Uh, weird conditions. Now, was this improved during the governorship elections? Yes, I, I thank God for the postponement of the election because actually in terms of welfare, I neck capitalized on the, the postponement to improve a whole lot of, uh, in terms of facilities mm -hmm. that were provided with mat. Mat. Uh, we now, uh, we slept on a tight floor. I see. And uh, we provided with buckets, water, and uh, all that. I'm just talking of FCT, I don't know about uh, other states, but uh, generally, in terms of a uh, uh, core member welfare, my own center, it was really it a was nice decent. Amount. Did you yes. hear anything to that effect as well, Jenny? Um, I, I, my only experience with that was you know, going to return my results after the presidential election by midnight that day. And then the collecting center was where I saw, but so I saw a lot of people with their, a lot of the core members with their loads, with their baggages, in, but I wasn't sure that was where it was a big hub in a, in a school. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure if that was where they, they slept or if they were just there to, to just, you know, uh, like collect their results and all and submit and all that. So maybe, maybe Collins will confirm <laughs> that. And, and, and I didn't go ahead to ask. Okay. You know, at that, at that but point. I just figured out that, okay, this is where they're going to be. And I left there very angry, like the place was hot. The place was, you know, it's just, it was just a mess. <laughs> and then, and I, I left there just feeling for them. And to think about that in, in in addition to the fact that what you finally got paid for those who have been paid wasn't exactly what most of you were expecting. Let's move on to safety. Even at this moment, we are getting results about ad hoc staff, INEC ad hoc staff, and even other stakeholders at the elections who had been attacked by party thugs, people who had, you know, all forms of violence. It seems INEC ad hoc staff or INEC staff in general have become targets for, I don't know, thugs or, or, or agents, even some party agents have experienced some harm. How have you been able to mitigate that? I mean, of course, with what happened in the presidential, were there any security um, measures put in place by INEC to protect INEC ad hoc staff in this particular election? So unfortunately, police don't go to polling unit with their guns. So the thugs and the party agents capitalize on that to know, have um, ad hoc uh, staff to, you know, unleash their mayhem on. And I think what INEC should do is to actually train security agencies on elections la landscape because it's not just a normal security stuff that they used to, a conventional security stuff that they mm -hmm. used to go after. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that I, uh, because police don't go to polling units with their guns or any... Um, instrument of violence, no, they're, they're, yeah. they are actually subjected to intimidation by thugs. The thugs themselves. Who, who actually are there handy with their guns and all that. So what do you have to do? So, and most times what causes this thing is because I neck, you cannot just set four days for a training for a very sensitive assignment, for that matter, for a core member or thereabout. And most times I neck too, at the end of the day, they change core members name with people that you don't even know where they got them from. So. They will go to pull no, hold unit. on, hold on, I want to get that. You're saying I next sometimes interchange your names course, with people. Of course, of course, because the role I played in the presidential election wasn't the role I played in these just concluded elections. I see. So, so many people were changed. Okay, you have people that because of the intimidation they experienced in the other uh, election, mm -hmm. 
decided to abscond in this one. So, oh. you know, there is now a deficit. I see. You know, how do we bridge this gap now? They bring out maybe people that are not... You probably never knew you know, about... Or, and you are still going to work with these people and how, to, how do you manage them? Because you already experienced and you have to put them through. So, the ordinary electorate or the talk who are looking at you behind the scene, we see how you guys are jittering. I see. And see, uh, they will even be shouting. Is it that you people did not pass through the normal mm. training? Because there is no, there's a disconnect yes, now. The professionalism you are supposed to have displayed in front of the people, mm. you actually lacked. So they capitalized on that to have an like, ad hoc staff. Uh, uh, Jenny, a that's lot so of true. that mm. interesting. Yeah, you know, so this true. this yeah. this is shocking revelation. <laughs> Jenny, a lot of party members even ended up becoming those dogs. I have to be honest with you because we got some videos mm. where party agents at some point became violent mm. within each other among themselves and even towards INEX staff. Mm. Did you experience that? Have you heard reports of that? And what situations led to those? Led to those? The, okay, for, I, did, I had a couple of you know, fracas here and there, not exactly my polling units, even though I'll come back to, um, to what happened in my polling unit, but I had the, just yesterday, I had a polling unit just close by that the story was even that the um, the party um, the polling agents refused to work until they were paid. Something you know, I think they are protesting maybe delaying payments or something, you know, and all of that. But in my polling unit, um, we had a lot of people. <laughs> we had fewer parties show up as polling agents. Then you know, you we had a particular party whose agents were everywhere. You know, like uh, maybe you have one polling unit per party, but you have this party with four people. You know, and then they were trying to be to show that we are the party. They were intimidating. Do you understand? Like yes. there was that intimidation. Like who are you? We are the you know, and all of that. That changed a bit yesterday. It was funny. Um, <laughs> it's funny. And then you know, it changed a bit yesterday, and more people who were intimidating or even bullied other other people. We are we are somewhat calm, more quiet, was meek. You know, it was just a mixture of emotions here and there. Yeah. You know, really. And then you know, even when we had a little issue, you know, in the presidential election because of um, issues with um, the card and um, whether somebody should vote if yes. if, if yeah. not verified with the card and stuff. You know, some of those party agents were really you know opening eye like you know you have to do that. But apart from that, that was just, you know, really what happened. There was no major issue in my own polling unit, yeah. All right, let, let's talk about the low turnout. I mean, I, mm. I went, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I went round Abuja and there were some polling units I got to, I didn't even see a single person. Mm -hmm. and and there were some polling units we had gone to that were filled to the brim during the presidential elections that had just a handful. Yeah. What do you think were the reasons that people didn't turn out, especially here in the FCT, to vote? Starting with you again, Jenny, why did it happen? Very interesting question because I, I've engaged with a lot of people on that. From my experiences, I mean, I saw that when I got to my polling unit yesterday, um, between when the INEC officials had arrived and two hours later, nobody was there who was who came to vote. It was just polling, polling agents and then, then... Where was your polling unit? Uh, Metama won. Okay. Uh, Metama Ministers here won, yeah. So then, you know, people said trickling in, one, and so, but we never had like a queue of two people, even talk less of three people. And my polling unit had over almost 700 people vote in During the presidential, the presidential elections? Yesterday, we didn't have up to 110 people. <laughs> Overall, I mean, this is me now after all the results have been called. So it was that, I mean, let me tell you one of the things that happened. Because I sat by and, um, you know, listen, I f a few people came, voted, stood by, called their friends and colleagues and said, please, just come and vote. Mm -hmm. I remember a particular woman, because I, 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 I was so excited for her, I said, thank you for doing this. She kept, you know, just calling, to, uh, calling somebody on phone and saying, just come and vote. There's no line, there's no queue, just come, you know. And then she drove out after a while, came back with a woman who I thought she was the one calling, of course. And the woman came, well, you could see that she was visibly still angry and asking you people. And then she was shouting on the core members, like, you know, like they were INEC, and said, mm. you guys, you guys went to school and you guys allow yourself to be sold. So, you know, and they were like, ma, it's not our thing. You so know, that's, and all how, that. that's how scanty She was the so gradual. Yes, it was so scanty. There was, I mean, we had, we, we had a party. Because the core members were relaxed, you know, they started playing music, and it was, Whoa. you know, so we had a lot that, of... That's pretty interesting. We, yeah, we had a lot okay. of discussions because there was no, uh, there was really no what, You no know, pressures. somebody actually said one of the reasons that people didn't show up to vote in the FCT was because most of them didn't even know about the, the candidates who were contesting. Or no, uh, you, you know what happens? Usually, yes, 
so many so, so many people in the, in the FCG are focused on the federal, you know, but and so they don't pay attention to who is the, who is running for council or who is running for chairman. Mm -hmm. But that changed a bit because for me, this was the first election where we had a lot of turnout when it comes to a lot, a lot of Nigeria who would never have voted, mm -hmm. who had never also voted, mm -hmm. come out to vote. People even came from the abroad to make sure they get their PVC, came back again to vote. So this was one election that was clearly different. Mm -hmm. So we had more turnout, but in comparison to whether people, it, it was not like the way, it was not because of the they same did, apartheid no, we used okay, to have. All right. Yeah, it was more of a protest. Like, I, oh, it was more yes. of a, pro a I protest to what? To, a protest to, to the presidential I mean, elections? Yes, to, people feel, you didn't count the first time, so why should I waste my time with all my education? That, in fact, that, that was the, even people that came to vote, some of them just came, okay, I just decided to come because after all, nothing is actually happening. So you could you and you could see people crossing people are like no way I'm not going so to allow myself to be raped the second time. So you that the reason people didn't come out to vote was because they didn't trust the process. They didn't believe Clearly. the credibility Clearly. of INEC to conduct you know uh, uh, these elections <laughs> to be credible. I was also on social media at the same time because I'm a polling agent and I'm also a blogger. So I had to do the two, two jobs one silently one day. A lot of conversations were boycott that. Why will you be there? Why why will you ask us to vote? Are you okay with all your education? You allow yourself to get into the second round. Jenny, it's Jenny, yeah, what, so embarrassing. I want to get your thoughts on this. Do you also share, share Jenny's um, thoughts that the reason people didn't come out this time was because they really didn't think their votes were going to count anyways? This is exactly what happened in 2007 before Yeradua you know, initiated electoral reform in order to build people's confidence mm -hmm. in the process. Um, 2011 election, people actually say it was free and fair. There was turnout. 2015 election, people said their vote counted. This is a departure from yeah. all of that because in two people, this, this presidential elections, people actually thought their vote did not count. So it's a, just a direct protest. A direct protest that what should I go there that my vote will not count. Yeah. So that's just unbelievable. So the if at my own polling, uh, there's a polling unit nearby. I think we went there very late, as mm -hmm. well, maybe that kind of nine mm -hmm. or ten, mm -hmm. and uh, we. The security men were yeah. even begging us to stay there till 2 p.m. so that they can even actually so write they their can own just reports. Finish. Yes, exactly. So there was no one. You guys were actually. But that was happened because we what? just sat back, just waiting. Oh, is it time? Is it almost two? Immediately it was two. In the presidential what election, we were counting. In the presidential election, I left my polling unit 2 a.m. on Sunday. Even me, I okay, I, okay when well, I left earlier, I, I left about past two to 12 midnight. Um, but yesterday, no counting everything, we left there by past four. Still, we're done. It's not just it's not just in FCT alone. I think the same thing was reported yes. We, 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 the there was a huge record yeah. of very low turnout yeah, across turnout. Nigeria. But mm -hmm. you know the FCT. I don't yeah. know. It was, you it know, was, it was you, know you know because we didn't have any governorship election. Yes. Per se, so I mean we don't look at the whole the whole up. momentum that we got. At yes. The so much. So it, it, it was an anti-climax. Make sure that if you did anything anti-party, they will come after you. The crowd, I'm not talking about any official. They that was during the, the presidential yes, election. Yes, they put the ad, ad hoc staff on their toes. Like, you have to get this right. We have to see it. If it's invalid, let us look at it and agree it's but invalid. This time, but, but this time, we're like... If I even give some, <laughs> some parties the opportunity to now... Yeah. A big thank well, you to yeah. both of you, Jenny and Collins. <laughs> this is quite an interesting thank conversation. You. I mean, some of the things to take away from today's conversation with both of you who worked um, during the governorship and the state assembly elections, number one. According to you, what INEC promised in terms of remuneration isn't exactly what you received. The security, they didn't pay much attention to that. They invested more in so many other things instead of investing in security. And then, of course, a lot of people probably didn't show up in protest of the presidential elections according to your assessment. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, Thank you've been you. watching Dance for Democracy right here on Roots TV Nigeria. My name is Gloria Oje Emode. Please give us your comments on the comment section of this video and follow our social media platforms. Half article is better than thousands of words. Buhani is doing the best in Nigeria.